It's afternoon as I'm recording this, so I wish you good afternoon. First of all, I want to call to your attention the optional student aids tab on each module. Uh, in the case of what we're going to be talking about today, the Japanese poets, um, the PDF on Japan poems will show you some images of the beautiful mountains and the cherry blossoms, which are an important theme in many of, of these poems. I wanted to give you to talk just a little bit about a couple of the poems to give you a pattern to use in reading them. For example, in your literature vo book, volume B, page 1175, from Hitomaro's poem uh, on passing the ruined capital of Omi. He starts off on, on the first page, uh, talking about each of the emperors uh, in succession ruling from um, Kashihara Palace in Yamato. Yamato is an ancient poetic name for Japan. But as you turn the page, he talks about one who was different and moved his capital to Omi. And he describes a visit to that place where that sovereign god, august ancestral deity, and I've got some notes about Shinto on that student aids page that may help to explain some of those references as well. But he talks about where, he, as he looks at this spot where he's heard that its mighty halls rose, all there is now is spring grasses. And he thinks about how all of that one-time splendor is gone. And it's sad to see. But it's not just about not seeing that splendor anymore. It's kind of a metaphor for a very Buddhist concept of the emptiness of life in this world. You know, this world is short-lived. And nothing that it has to offer lasts. So this, the fact that there's now no, no trace left of this once great palace reminds him of how time erases all of our accomplishments, all of our actions. In the long run, they don't matter. It's all emptiness. And then after the main poem, there are two little envoys, two little kind of short um, tanka, they're called, uh, five line poems that kind of capture a little bit of the essence of the longer poem. Japanese poetry tends over time to get shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> but these little poems, while they don't have all the explanation of the longer one, they kind of hint at the um, the kind of meaning, the feeling. See, lyric poetry, and especially Japanese lyric poetry, is about communicating feelings, emotions. And because Japanese poetry conventionally is very short, it doesn't explain the feeling, it evokes it. It suggests some images that are intended to make you th feel certain things, think about certain things. But he doesn't come right out and tell you. It just hints at it. That's especially true in the uh, reading from the Japanese poets that I gave you on Canvas. At the end of that, the haiku. A haiku is a very short form of poetry unique to Japan. It's only a three-line poem. Um, each of the three-line um, poems is a separate poem. This is not all one long poem by Basho. Each three-line poem stands completely alone. And in Japanese, it's made up of 17 syllables. 
the first and third lines, five syllables each, the middle line, seven syllables. Now you can't always do that in English translation because what you say very succinctly in one language may take you more or less words to say in a different language. For example, when I was in high school, we had a um, an assembly to encourage people to take foreign languages, and each of our language clubs did a skit in our own language, in the language we were taking, and then did it again in English so everybody could understand what we're saying. And it ended with each of the foreign language teachers coming out and repeating in the language that they taught a very popular commercial slogan at the time. Try it. You'll like it. That's really catchy in English. But you know how you say that in German? Versuchen Sie es. Es wird Ihnen gefallen. You know how much longer that is? You can't say it in as few words in German as you can in English. Same thing happens with some of these translations. So our English translation may not fit that pattern of, of syllables, but the Japanese originals do. The other thing you got to have in a haiku is some kind of seasonal reference. Sometimes it's explicit, sometimes it's implied. For example, the first of the haiku in that uh, reading on canvas by Basho, who's probably the most famous of the haiku poets. Many, many things they bring to mind. Cherry blossoms. Well, the seasonal reference is when do cherry trees bloom? Around here, when do the Bradford pears bloom? They're blooming now. So the season is spring. Uh, and I invite you again to look at the Japanese poems um, on the student aids page. And, and as, once you get past the pictures of Mount Fujiyama, you'll see images of cherry blossoms, um, some of which were taken by my, my younger daughter. And there's actually a picture of her next to some of the cherry blossoms in there. Um, when she was wa working in Washington, D.C., they're famous for the cherry trees there. But in Japan, cherry blossoms suggest a lot of things. The renewal of life in the spring, you know, it's um, for a long time everything outside has looked dead. And just now, it's coming to life just as coronavirus is trying to kill us all. So it makes you think about springtime and renewal and the kind of optimistic feeling we get. In Japan, cherry blossoms are regarded as the most beautiful thing there is. And if you look at some of those pictures, it's hard to argue. But the other thing about the cherry blossoms is they don't last long. Cherry trees like our Bradford pears that you'll see around here put on their blooms before they put on their spring leaves. So they're really gorgeous when they're blooming. But that period of blooming doesn't last long. And so it also makes him think about the brevity of life. How short life is. How quickly it passes by. So all of these things he suggests, he doesn't have the time to explain. My explanation takes a lot more syllables than his poem. But he hints that he wants you to think about the associations that we have with cherry blossoms. Now what I want you to do is to apply kind of what I've suggested to you here to some of the other poems. And I want you for our discussion to make some comments about one of the poems that speaks to you and what you think it's saying, what you think it means.